Good morning, Cyclone fans. Today, I'm pleased to share with you that TJ Otzelberger will be our next men's head basketball coach. I'm so excited to welcome TJ, Allison Lacey, and their three children, Olivia, Jace, and Stella, back to Ames, Iowa. They're home away from home. Before we spend time talking about why TJ, I thought I'd share several important things with you. All of you are so loyal, so passionate, and give of so much to us, both in tickets and donations, that we feel as our investors or shareholders, you have a right to know and we have a responsibility to share. What did this process actually entail? And so I wanna spend a little time talking about the process before we talk about why TJ. First of all, we did a lot of pre-work. Unfortunately, we anticipated we could be in a situation where we had a coaching change. So for the last several weeks of the basketball season, our staff spent a considerable amount of time identifying candidates that we felt would be a good fit at Iowa State that understood what it meant to live in the Midwest and to recruit in the Midwest, and candidates that we thought financially we could make it work. We also identified a search firm if we so choose or would have chosen to use a search firm. And we also spent time putting together the pathway forward to how to contact individuals because we knew it would have to happen quickly if we were gonna to try to gauge their interest, their agents, their cell phone numbers, common people that we know, so that we would have a game plan in case we had to activate. As we all know, last Monday night, we unfortunately had to make the decision to move in another direction. Tuesday morning, we began to activate our plan. And we spent all day Tuesday working through that list and working through our contacts to gauge candidates' interest. And as you would expect, some candidates didn't have interest, some wanted to think about it, and others were. But it became clear that one candidate had far more knowledge, was very prepared, and was the most ready to take our job. So we decided yesterday on Wednesday to essentially run a dual process. We had to protect ourselves, and so we continued to work our leads and work the list of engagement. But at the same time, we started to do a deeper dive on what it would look like if TJ ended up being our new coach. And a lot of people don't stop to think about what goes into that from attorneys to financial planners to tax consequences to um, diversity and equity, all the things that have to be thought about as you work through that process. And after spending considerable time yesterday working through that, we got to a spot last evening where we were able to have Tim Day, our faculty athletics rep, and Dr. Wendy Winterstein be involved in a personal interview with TJ. At the conclusion of that interview late last night, Dr. Winterstein and I were able to jointly offer TJ the opportunity to be our next head coach. And this morning, TJ and Allison called me to share with us that they had chosen to be Cyclones again. And I thought it was really important for you to just have a backdrop on what that process entailed. And I think it's also important that I wanna spend a quick time just thanking some people. Because oftentimes I'm seen as the point guard, I'm the one that's communicating to you today. And a lot of people think, well, it's just Jamie Pollard involved. I wanna thank Dr. Winterstein. Her leadership, the autonomy she gives us to do what we need to do in short order is critical to our ability to navigate this process so quickly. To Tim Day, our faculty athletics rep, to be able to come into that process and be knowledgeable of what we need and what we don't need. And to be able to ask the tough questions 
and to be able to talk through from a faculty's perspective, from a staff member's perspective, what matters at Iowa State. I also want to thank Mike Norton, the University General Counsel, for spending considerable time talking with attorneys, financial planners, tax advisors. I also want to thank Margot Foreman, the Assistant Vice President over Equity. You know, Margot has a, a very challenging but very important position on this campus to make sure that diversity and inclusion is involved in everything we do. And any candidate that we were going to talk with also had to talk about what their staffing plans were and how they were gonna assure us that diversity and inclusion would be involved in this process. I think it's also important to point out several of the key staff members on my leadership team. Charles Small. Charles is a former basketball player for Jamie Dixon at the University of Pittsburgh. And Charles brings a great perspective to this process and in interacting with our student athletes. Steve Melchow, our longtime communications specialist and confidant to me personally, and to Chris Jorgensen, our CFO, and to Carrie Ruba, our Director of Human Resources. That team works so cohesively together to allow us to expedite this process and to make sure we were doing everything in the best right way. I also want to thank Desiree, the Athletics Director at UNLV. She handled this very professionally. I know she didn't want to lose TJ. She did everything in her power to keep TJ at UNLV, including offering an extension late last night. But in the end, TJ and Allison really, really want to come home to Ames and be Cyclones again. So let's talk about why TJ, because that's the most important part of this. Let me start by saying this. There's no athletics director in the country that can hire a coach and guarantee that that coach is gonna win. Think of it like this. There's 300 division one basketball programs and on any given night, 150 of them have to lose. It's mathematically impossible for all of them to win. So anybody that says they can guarantee that isn't really being honest. But there are some things you can guarantee. You can guarantee integrity, you can guarantee character, you can guarantee fit by doing your due diligence. And in this particular case, TJ worked here for eight years. He worked with most of us. Our staff all know him. We know about his integrity. We know how he fits our culture. And that really gave him a leg up. Secondly, we know his storied history of being a proven recruiter at Iowa State. Craig Brackens, Melvin Edgem, George Niang, Naz Long, Matt Thomas, you know, all the individuals that, you know, I, and I even hate cutting the list too short because I'm starting to think of more of them, but you know what I'm referring to. TJ was so involved in recruiting many, many of the great players that have come through Iowa State during that eight year period. He knows how to recruit to Iowa State. He knows how to recruit in the Midwest. But TJ also now has experience as a head coach. Five years ago, when we considered him, he didn't have that experience as a head coach. But he's now been the head coach for three years at South Dakota State, where he went 70 and 33. He won 70% of his games as a head coach. He won two conference championships. He went postseason three times, including two times to the NCA. And then he moved on to UNLV. You know, and at UNLV, it inherited a program that hadn't won 12 games in the Mountain West Conference since 1993, when Raleigh Massimino was their head coach. Think about that. That's 27 years ago. And in TJ's first year at UNLV, he inherited a program where he had to let some young men go. He brought in a couple of grad transfers for one year, including Naz Long's brother. And he won 12 games and finished second in the Mountain West, including knocking off undefeated South Dakota State when they were, or San Diego State when they were ranked fourth in the country. I share that because he's proven he can win at another program. But then he also showed his true leadership because he took that program and had to start over for year two. And he signed the number one recruiting class in the Mountain West Conference. 
seven freshmen. His roster this year had 10 players that had never played at UNLV. So 10 of his 14 players were new to that team. His starting point guard got hurt and couldn't play the whole season. And they suffered a 33 day pause because of COVID. Yet despite all that adversity and all those new faces, they found a way to finish 500 in the Mountain West Conference, including beating Utah State, who the men's basketball committee selected as an at-large to the NCAA tournament. So if you combine his integrity, his recruiting experience, his knowledge of our culture, and his experience as a head coach with the fact that TJ and Allison want to be at Iowa State, it became really obvious to us that TJ Otzelberger was the perfect coach and the perfect fit for Iowa State University at this particular time. I look so forward to being able to have TJ get introduced or reintroduced to all of you. We're gonna have a press conference on Friday morning. Unfortunately, because of COVID, it'll have to be a virtual press conference, but TJ will arrive in Ames tomorrow so that he can begin meeting with our players and putting his staff together and hit the ground running to help us restore our basketball program to where we all want it. I thank you for your patience and understanding during this, and I really thank you for how you handled the last 48 hours. I'm proud to be your athletics director, and I'm excited for us to bring back Hilton Magic to Hilton Coliseum. Thank you, and go Cyclones.